Good morning, everyone. How's it going? What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome. How are you today, everyone? I hope you're doing well. As I welcome you to my first of two gameplay streams for the day. Hope that you're all in a good mood, and I hope that you guys are ready for some fun today. Uh, with what undoubtedly will probably be the most entertaining so far uh, Mario 3D World stream. Reason being, today we are finally, after three sessions of this game, heading into what arguably could be considered the toughest part of the game. Why do I say that? Because we are going to be heading into the end of the, the main game of Mario 3D World, which is World 8. But after that, we're going to be heading into the post-game content. Okay? The post-game content is a bunch of unlockable worlds that you can only get if you've basically been doing a completionist run-up to this point, which I have been. I have actually gotten every single star, <clears throat> every single stamp, and I grabbed the top of every single flag so far in the game. Okay? So that's good. And I'm obviously excited to see what happens once you've unlocked the optional stuff. Like, what are these optional worlds and stuff? I didn't see them in my first playthrough. I think I might have unlocked one of them. But I certainly didn't go full-on completionist to try to unlock everything. I know that for a fact. When the game was new... I was doing co-op with my friend John Rambo. <clears throat> he was only able to come once a week to my place to do co-op gameplay. And so we would try to get as much done as possible in each session. And I know that we got through the eight worlds and we may have delved into the challenging optional post-game content. But I know we didn't do everything in the game. Um, so, today is the big day where we will be delving into that stuff. And obviously, like I said, I'm excited. I want to see what it is. But the thing is... You know it's going to be challenging. You know it's going to be rage-inducing. I'm probably going to die more in today's stream than I have the entirety of the game so far. And I so much so that I'm actually considering going back and grinding a bit um, for extra lives because I get the feeling that I'm going to need it. You know what I mean? I get the feeling that, like, I'm absolutely going to need to get those extra lives. And so I could go back to some of those slot machines I didn't do yet. I could go back to that golden train that has a ridiculous amount of coins where you can get extra lives. Like, I think I'm going to need to do that. Because I get the feeling the challenging stuff is right ahead now. Okay? So, yes, that is on the agenda for today. That is what we're, we're doing. It should be fun. Um... I hope you guys are ready for the excitement. <laughs> okay. Um, I am. And that's the major stream. Now, how much more of Mario do we have? I honestly don't know. Because um, I don't know how much post-game content or, or optional challenge content there actually is in the game. I, you know, it's not apparent. It doesn't explain itself in that way. It's just like, you know, there's stuff. But, you know, what what... What is it? I don't know. How many extra worlds are there here? <clears throat> I honestly don't know. Um, so let's find out together, you know? Let's play today. Let's see. Let's see what unlocks. Now, I'm sure some of you have played this and probably know better than me. So by all means, if you know, you know, what I need to do to unlock stuff coming up and everything, let me know. What haven't I done? Did I miss anything? Uh, I I'll definitely will take the help, Okay. <clears throat> so that's today's stream should be a good one hope you guys will enjoy it and chill with me now here's the thing because we're heading into the most challenging content of the game right um this would pretty much really really apply to the whole wagering system that we've been doing with the channel points recently why do i say that because with this whole wagering system uh, you can guess, gee, what's going to happen? Will Phil beat this? Will Phil beat that in a certain amount of ta uh, takes or guesses or or runs, right? Um, so what we could do each, every single stage here, I could pretty much say, all right, do you think I'll beat it on the first shot? Do you think I'll die less than five times? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Will I get all the stars on the first run? We could do all these kind of wagers, okay? So we'll see. Actually, Chrome Abyss just told me there's an infinite life exploit 
on world one two, so there's no real need to grind. Oh yeah. Well, hey, if you can tell me what it is, I'm I'm likely gonna need these lives. I I really see myself needing the lives because already it's gotten pretty damn challenging. So I see it getting just tougher and tougher <clears throat> the further in we get here. Okay. Alrighty then. <laughs> All right, so excitement today for Mario. Now on the late stream tonight. All right, it's going to be heading into the final area of Immortals Phoenix Rising. We're already kind of in it. It's called King's Rock. It's this giant mountain that you're climbing. The difference between this and the rest of the game thus far is that this part of the game has been completely different. It's actually linear rather than uh rather than being, you know, open world roaming. You have to follow this set path to climb up the mountain. And I'm liking it, actually. There is optional stuff to do along the way. If you thoroughly investigate stuff, <clears throat> um, you could find hidden stuff there to do. And I have it. I've been looking around and finding hidden things around the ways you know, to, to, to do. And I'm happy about that, obviously, because I want to get some challenge. Rather than just doing a linear thing, I would like to, to explore a bit, find some hidden challengers and everything. You know, pretty good. So, looking forward to that tonight. However, I don't know how much is left in the game. You know, King's Rock seems to be... Uh, seems to be... Uh, near the end. Because after this, this King's Rock, I don't know what else is in it besides the central area, which is when you fight, I guess, Tartarus, the boss. We'll see. Um, so, tonight, depending on how things go, I may get really far. Maybe we'll get to the end of the game. Or maybe there's a lot more left. The way I, I've done it is I did I did schedule another stream of Immortals for this week. Because I don't know if this is the end of the game or not. So I said, what the hell, let's schedule in an extra stream of Immortals. Um just for the hell of it. So that way, if you know, if there is more uh to do it, we you know we can do another major stream and maybe wrap it up on another major stream. But in reality, I don't actually know if there's enough to hold another stream or not. I don't know how many of you have beaten the game or whatever. Um, but you would know better than me, I'm sure. So, we'll see what happens tonight with Immortals, okay? I, I get the feeling we're nearing the end. And definitely, uh, this this week, we're going to beat the game. Okay? Um, Alright. So, that's today's streams. Tomorrow... Yes, ladies and gentlemen, finally, after many, 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 many months of challenge, of challenge, excuse me. I said challenge because uh, Random Game Roulette just cheered, asking me about this Mario game and saying, is it the hardest game ever? And it's a challenge. It was stuck in my head. Anyway, after many, 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 many months of anticipation, tomorrow it is official. Divinity Original Sin 2 begins right here on stream. It'll be the first gameplay stream, a major session. And in fact, I've actually scheduled it again for Wednesday. So we're going to get in, you know, six to seven hours of Divinity within the first couple of days that I'm playing it to get a good chunk into it and see what the hell the game is all about. <clears throat> all right? So, how's that going to go? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what to expect with this game. Um, some people already are like, we're going to have to help you with tips because if you don't know stuff about the game, you're going to suck at it. It's going to be terrible. So I'll be open to help and suggestions. However, um, no spoilers. What I mean by that is, hey, you want to help me out to understand the combat engine? Please do. You want to help me out with some builds and stuff so I understand exactly what to do with each character to make them effective? By all means. But don't tell me, oh, here's a boss. Here's how you beat it immediately. Oh, look, there's this challenging thing coming up. Let me tell you all about it and spoil it. No. No. There's a difference between helping with some basics so you understand how to play a game versus completely... Hand, holding someone's hand and spoiling a game completely, right? There's a big difference there. So, I am not going to allow myself to be monster spoiled on this, okay? I'm just not doing it. So, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from with this, okay? <laughs> All right. So, that's going to be tomorrow's main gameplay stream and tomorrow night. The late night stream will be Fall Guys, a weekly session of that. I don't know if the game will overstay its welcome by one Monday night or not. We'll find out, okay? I'll be off from streaming on Tuesday. When I return on Wednesday, as I've already said, it's going to be more Divinity, and then Wednesday night's going to be Call of Duty. And I know you guys are excited for Call of Duty because the streams have been so action-packed 
and fun with the penny points wagering as of late that you guys are, you know, really dig them. And I can't wait for more on Wednesday night. Now, the rest of this week, I don't want to really get so far ahead of myself here. All right. But the rest of this week, just so you guys know, it's going to be the continuation and hopefully conclusion of Immortals Phoenix Rising. It's going to be the continuation of Super Mario 3D World. I don't know if we'll beat it this week or not. We'll see. It's going to be one more session of Bowser's Fury because you guys demanded this last night. You said, listen, you beat the story, but we like how you're getting all the different cat shinies and unlocking them with the puzzles and stuff, and we enjoying this, so please do one more session. So I agreed with everyone. All right, I'll do one more session of Bowser's Fury on a late night stream over the weekend. All right? So there will be more of that to finish that up over the weekend. Okay? Um... In addition, there'll be more Call of Duty, of course. And also, there is a new game released this week. Are you guys aware of this? Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. What is that? Well, back in the day, in arcades, there was an incredibly difficult side-scrolling action game called Ghosts and Goblins. It was one of the most difficult games ever made. It was purposely designed... To be what they called a quarter muncher. Okay? The game had a knight named Arthur throwing lances, torches, and other weapons against a ridiculous army of monsters, the undead, plus demons and the like. There were crazy platforming challenges, there was tough combat, it was ridiculously tough. And they made it on purpose to make it so you would die a ton and keep putting money into the game. It was called a quarter muncher for that reason. It was one of the biggest profiting games of the time in arcades, okay? This game went on to have a sequel called Ghouls and Ghosts. Then they came out Super Ghouls and Ghosts. You may have played some of these games, especially if you played either the Genesis Mini or the SNES uh, classics that are currently on the Switch. They both had a version of either Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins, okay? So there's a new one coming out this week for the Nintendo Switch called Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. It's a brand new game. This is not a remaster or a remake. It's an actual new Ghosts and Goblins game. And I'm excited to try it out. Even though it's probably going to completely kick my ass, I think it'll be something fun and different for the streams for variety. Okay? It's also only $30. It's not like this is a full $60 release. If it were, there's no way I would buy it. But being that it's kind of a half price game, um, I think that it's a good one to add to the rotation for variety's sake right now. And it's probably a game I don't even know if I'll ever beat it. It seems like it's going to be so difficult that I might not even be able to beat the damn game, you know? Think of it this way. Ghosts and Goblins was just as tough as the original Ninja Gaiden. It was meant to be one of those games that's kind of a rite of passage. If you beat it, my God, you you got good. And, you know, back in the day in the 80s of arcades, that's what it was like. You're like, damn, you beat Ghosts and Goblins? <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Like, you're fucking dedicated. I, you know, most people don't have patience or money to do that. So, so let's see what happens starting this Thursday, all right? So th that's a new game I'm playing this week, plus the continuation of Super Mario 3D World, plus the continuation of Divinity Original Sin 2, the conclusion of Immortals, more Bowser's Fury, more Street Fighter, of course, my weekly Street Fighter session. There'll be a late-night chill stream of Yakuza 7. We're actually getting to the, the final sessions of grinding here for that game to beat the final super dungeon. Like, there's a lot of stuff coming to culmination in the coming week. And, of course, we're going to hit March. We're at the very end. Um, we're at the very end of the month. If you can believe it, February's almost over. I mean, yikes. This year already, we're two months into the year. Really? Where the hell is the time going? And the thing is, it's not like there's a bunch of high-profile releases. I don't know. I think, really for me, I'll be honest with all of you. Ever since COVID started a, week, a year ago, time is just not the same anymore. Time just feels odd to me. Some things seem like they take longer, but it seems like I can't keep track of time anymore. Like, what's going on? Because everything's so different. And you just lose track of it. Like, holy shit. There's only... You know, seven day, one week left in February. Seriously. I thought it just started. <laughs> well, it is what it is. So, and then in March, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be going. What, 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 excuse me, what we're going to be doing. Because uh, there's really not that many releases in March. Maybe one or two smaller ones. But nothing too exciting. 
So I guess we'll see what happens in March and balance it out with all the other stuff we're doing, you know. Now, also coming up, of course, you guys are currently working on nominating games for an upcoming viewer's choice playthrough that I'll be doing in March, all right? So how do you nominate? You type exclamation point viewer's choice into the stream chat, all right? And basically what you need to do is nominate the games you want to see. Now, of course, there's criteria posted there of what qualifies and what doesn't. Please read it first. But please nominate games. You guys have one week left to do so. I'm leaving those nominations open until uh, the end of the month. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to tally up the games that have been nominated the most. We're going to formulate a poll wh by which then you guys are going to vote on what game you want to see as a full playthrough here on the streams. Okay? So excited to see what you guys come up with with that. Those viewers' choice events have created many different things over the years. Many different kinds of playthroughs. Games that I never really heard of or never hit my radar. Um, that I ended up playing and really enjoying. So, curious to see what you guys come up with this time around. Okay? Now, in addition to that, on the first week of March, there will be an episode of Ask the King. This is my Q&A show where I answer your questions live. Okay? I'm excited for that. To see how it turns out. Because I haven't done one since Christmas. So, please post up your questions for Ask the King. You can type exclamation point Ask the King into the stream chat to do that. The more questions I get for the show, the better the show is. <clears throat> all right? So, please post up your questions, if at all you can. Um, when you post up your questions early like this, there's a much increased chance they will be ans or answered live on the show. Because I actually go through every single forum question and, you know, review them to see if, if they fit into the show. All right? Versus if you just post up the day of the show on my Twitter or you're trying in the stream chat live during the show to get a question answered, I may not even see your question, okay? So, please post up your questions, and that's coming up first week of March, all right? All right, um, outside of all of that, I don't have a heck of a lot more to talk about this morning. Um, in regards to, like, gaming news and stuff there's nothing going on really like i look checked this morning and nothing no news overnight no real discussion of anything gaming related if i'm wrong by all means you guys please let me know what i missed so we can talk about it but it just doesn't seem like there's much going on in the realm of news today it seems pretty slow uh so there's nothing to really ex talk about extended uh you know extended discussion or anything good chumley says it's been a boring year phil truth i mean yeah there's not much going on this year yeah every time you think there's something exciting is going to happen it's been underwhelming oh look a new nintendo direct oh like not much going on pretty boring direct oh blizzard has their new digital event oh there's the same shit you knew was going to be on it and nothing no nothing exciting going on this year don't know what the hell's going on um <laughs> so no. <laughs> Golden Colt says, talk about politics, talk about the COVID relief plan. No, I will not do that. Okay. Um. So, yeah, really, there's nothing else to talk about. So, I guess let's get into the gratuitous plugs. By the way, today's Sunday. So, last day, if you wanted to cheer or get the subscription to the channel, this is the last day of the week where you show up on the leaderboard for the top 10 cheerers or sub gifters of the week. Those will reset overnight on Monday. So, last chance if you wanted to get in on those and get some recognition before everything resets overnight, okay? All right. So, everyone, I am an independent content creator. That makes me different from a lot of the people who do this for a living. Because a lot of the people who are full-time streamers or content creators make their living by having partnerships and sponsorships. Many of these people have a relationship with a company where they sell a product to you constantly on a stream. They advertise, they shill, they try to give you a code to buy something so they make money. Okay? I don't do that. All right? And one time I ever did that was Loot Crate. And even when I did that with Loot Crate, it was never an emphasis or a priority. And I basically made next to nothing doing it. Okay? Um, I don't have a contract with Twitch or YouTube or any other company to stream exclusively on their website and make a flat rate. A lot of the, the full-time content creators have that. I don't, all right? I'm truly independent. What I mean by that is I have no tethers to anything. I'm not reliant on any company, on anyone to basically, you know, 
pay me behind the scenes in order to do this. Instead, I get to say and do whatever I want on my streams. When I'm playing a game, I can be 100% honest with you. I don't have to worry about, oh no, I said this thing that now I've pissed off a sponsor and I've lost them and now my livelihood is at stake. All right? I don't have to pull my punches when I'm playing a game and say, oh darn, I'm under a non-disclosure agreement because I'm one of the people paid to advertise this game and so I can't tell you my honest thoughts about the game because my stream is basically just a paid advertisement so I can make money. That's not the case at all. Um, it's the opposite. I could do say and do whatever I want and people like that about me. I pride myself on the fact that I can be honest with you guys on a daily basis. That's always what I've striven for and what I've tried to maintain here on my streams so that I stay honest and you guys know when you're watching me play a game, you're getting the truth. You're getting the real experience out of me, not just some baloney so that I can make a paycheck, okay? And I've done this for over 12 years and I'm still here. I think that says something. Despite the fact that there's been tons of highs and lows, there's been tons of things that have happened over the years to me, I'm still here and people still find my content meaningful and pertinent or else I wouldn't be here. Many others have done what I do and have disappeared, gone away and moved on to other stuff. But not me, I'm still here doing what I love for a living. And by the way, I need to say this right up front. Thank you for allowing me to do what I love for a living. Because it's you who allowed me to do this. You guys who crowdfund my streams, who attend my streams and hang out with me, you know, you're the ones who made all this possible. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Because I don't have that backup from some company sponsoring me or paying me money just to stream. I'll never be like that. I'll never be at that level. You understand? What is going on outside? You hear that? I don't know what the hell is going on out there. <laughs> I hear a bunch of sirens, but they're gone now. Anyway. um, Yes, thank you guys for supporting me and allowing me to do what I love for a living. This is the best job I've ever had. Likely will be the best job I ever have in my entire life. I get to be my own boss. I get to hang out with you guys playing games and having fun every day. The fun social interactions. I genuinely love coming to work every single day. I do. And I'm very happy that I get to enjoy what I do for a living when many, many, many others out there I know do not. I'm the lucky one. Okay? Thank you for allowing me to continue that enjoyment here live every single day. All right? So if you like my content... And you like me and you want to see all this continue and continue to be successful. By all means, please contribute during the stream to crowdfund my efforts to keep doing it and, and support. However, I will say this up front before I mention a single way that you can actually support me. Contributions are not mandatory. Contributions are not expected. I consider it you going above and beyond being a standard stream viewer. If you contribute in any way, shape, or form. And I'm very appreciative of that. I want you guys to understand that I'm incredibly grateful for everyone who contributes to my streams. That's why I go out of my way to do full-on shout-outs to everyone who contributes because I am that grateful that I want you to know that I care about each and every one of you guys. And Thank you for being here and supporting my efforts, all right? Of course, if someone's here to derail the stream or insult me and do stupid shit, that's different. But in the most part, people who contribute are here to help out and keep me going. And I appreciate that crowdfunding support, okay? Um, don't ever feel bad if you can't contribute. Don't ever feel bad if what you think you can contribute isn't enough. That's ridiculous in my opinion. You guys are here to chill and have fun with games just like me. That's all this stream is about. That's all it ever has been about. I made videos on YouTube, gaming related videos for two and a half years before I monetized a single one. And I only did that once I lost my job. I'm not here to make a buck. I'm here to have fun with games just like you guys. All right. Now, if as a result of the, doing that, I can make a living, that's amazing. And that's the position I found myself in for the last decade. And I am so grateful for that, guys. So thank you so much for everything. Now, if you would like to support the streams, <clears throat> there are many ways you could do it. You could cheer with bits. You could subscribe to my channel. You could gift subscriptions to other people who are watching. Or you could tip me. You do all of those things, and all of those things help genuinely, okay? Um, in regards to tipping in particular, we do have reward tiers for reaching certain milestones on a stream. If we raise $50 of tips on a stream, I put on gunner glasses. 
If we raise a hundred dollars in tips, I put on a vest. Now, yesterday we actually hit the tips goal twice. All right, that's pretty outstanding that we did that. So the first stream that we did it, I put on the platinum vest, and then on the late stream, I put on the camo vest. All right, so it kind of reset stuff. Today it would be vest eligible would be beige, blue, platinum, red, and gray for this stream. So if we hit the tips goal, uh, I will put on one of those vests per your choice. Now, if we, by some freak chance, happen to double the tips goal today, which has only happened once since I instituted this, this reward over a week ago, um, I'll put on two vests at once. Remember, whenever the first vest is you vote in, I'll wear on one side, and then you'll vote on another one. Well, we're double vest. Okay? I know that sounds really stupid, because it is. But that's what we came up with as a tier two reward. Okay? So, yes... Thank you guys in advance for any support you lend during the stream. And uh, I really am appreciative of it. Thank you so much. Let's see what happens today. Hopefully, uh, we have some good support on the stream. All right. <clears throat> now, a couple things that I like to cover during the streams to help you guys out. All right. First off, if you are going to be a regular stream attendee of my stream or anyone else, if you're even considering contributing in any way on my streams, I will strongly recommend the following. Please diversify your name here on Twitch from any other name you use on the internet. First of all, do not use your real life name. That's a big no-no. In addition, don't use the same name or login as other sites that you use, notably your social media accounts. For example, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Don't use the same name. Why? Because people will, if they can get away with it, find a way... To harass people online. They just do it because they can get away with it. There's no real reason behind it. They just feel like they get some kind of pleasure out of annoying people. Okay? The absolute last thing you want is to find yourself the victim of, of the focus of one of these, these messed up people. And if you have the same name everywhere, they're just going to follow you around to all these different accounts and harass you all over the internet. So I strongly urge you, do not use the same name here as a million other places. All right? <clears throat> in addition, I strongly recommend you close open direct messages here on Twitch. Open direct messages are just an invitation for trolls to come harass you. Most people who use the direct messages on Twitch sadly use it for annoying harassment purposes. There's no reason to have them open. I per personally have mindset that only people on my friends list can send me a direct message, and I don't get harassed on Twitch as a result of that. So I recommend that you do exactly the same. Okay? Now, in addition to that, Ladies and gentlemen, if you are considering tipping me today, which I appreciate very, very much, uh, I do have to make a special request of you. Sadly, in the last several, i say last six months or so, I have received a ridiculous, and when I say ridiculous, I mean hundreds of fake tips through PayPal that then screwed over my business behind the scenes. Tips that were made with stolen credit cards, okay? So first of all, the tip looks legit. A lot of the times these people would impersonate other stream regulars. And I don't know who's real and who's not. So these tips would come through. I think that they're good. And then next thing you know, boom, charge back because the person whose credit card that really was filed with their bank says, I want my money back. This is messed up. In addition, when those chargebacks happen, I get all kind of negative things that happen against me, all right? Including fees, including penalties against my PayPal account that basically put it in a bad standing. There was one point last year, my PayPal account was in the red, meaning negative money, for almost a whole month, okay? Didn't talk about it publicly because I didn't want you guys to know how bad off things were because of these troll activities. There were certain days <clears throat> last year where I streamed all day, it looked like I had made hundreds and hundreds of dollars. In reality, I lost money from my account over over the course of the day because of the fake tips. Okay? So, I basically had to make a change. And I did. I instituted changes so that, number one, some of these troll tips couldn't come in. But also, knowing that no change that I made would be foolproof and some of them would still slip through the cracks, I instituted a requirement where if you're going to tip me, I require it be a verified tip. Now, you might say, what the heck does that mean? Well, what that means is that you go the extra mile and you verify your PayPal account 
by putting in your real life identity information, your bank account, other ID info, things that can identify you as a unique human that actually exists on this planet, rather than someone who stole a credit card and is trying to break the law by doing a fraudulent tip, okay? Now, the reason this is important is because when I see that a tip is verified, I know I can trust it. When you have your real life info tied to your account, if you try to commit fraud, you'll go to jail. It's a crime to lie to a financial institution and try to get your money back for no reason or just because you want to try to troll me. So I know people who are going to go the extra mile to do this, all right, are going to basically not screw me over. They're, they're legit supporters who want to help me out. These are not people who are trying to be malicious in any way, shape, or form. And I appreciate that. So thank you to those who in the last month since I've asked you guys to start doing this have gone out of your way to create verified PayPal accounts. If you guys haven't noticed, when I see the verified tips, that streamlines everything. It allows me to trust a contribution right off the bat and say, wow, okay, it's good to go. Let's keep moving smoothly here. As opposed to, sadly, when people are sending me unverified tips, I don't know if I could trust them. And now I got a question, gee, are you in the stream chat? Are you a stream regular or someone who's watched my channel before or supported in another way so that I know that I can trust you? And it just derails everything. It really does. It derails the movement of a stream when I have to sit here verifying contributions. I don't want to have to do that. But with the amount of fraud that I had against me over the last six months, it's something that I have to do to protect myself and my business. Okay? So, please consider verifying your PayPal account if you can. If you can't, for some reason... You know, we could talk about it. And if you're a stream regular, I may trust your tip regardless. Um, but every day this happens. Someone comes in and says, I want to support Phil. They tip me. It's unregistered, unverified tip. And I have to ask them on the stream, is this real? Are you legit? And then likely I have to just end up refunding that tip and saying, sorry, I can't accept it. It's too much of a liability for me. That sucks. These are people who want to help. But because they don't verify their accounts, I can't accept the help. All right? So please, if you like the streams, you like me, please go the extra mile. All right. I would appreciate that very much if you could. Fair enough. Okay. Good stuff. I've gotten done with all my, my stuff I wanted to talk about. And like I said, sadly, there's just no news to going on right now. I wish there were news to discuss and we could have a fun conversation about stuff going on in gaming news. There's nothing going on, man. It's boring. So, by the way, one final recommendation before we do get to shout outs for those who have contributed. Some people have started tipping me and using code words. I know that sounds silly, but it actually helps a ton. Let me explain what this means. Let's say you're going to send me a tip today, and you want me to know that it's legit, and you are a stream regular who I recognize. If you tip me and you put a word in your tip and say, this is my code word, I'll know that it's really you. And there's right now there's three different people who are actually doing this, so I know when they tip, if I see that word in the tip, I know it's legit. Versus if I don't see a word, I just have to I have to verify it. And the problem is there's some people who, who are coming here and impersonating others. And so it take, it's a pain in the ass. But if I see a code word in your tip, I know it's real. And I so like I said, three people have actually started doing this and it actually has worked. I'm like, damn, that was a great idea. So by all means, if you want to do that, keep doing it. That will streamline stuff and allow us to continue. Okay. All right, let's continue. Let's now get to shout outs. We actually start off with people who contributed overnight. We had Internet Famous McCroy who tipped me $2.60 overnight. He says, Can you recommend a good casual fighting game? I used to like Tekken. It devolved into long air juggles and rage art super moves. I prefer just knowing the majority of different characters' move lists and trying to predict attacks while poking away. Yeah, Tekken 100% has become a juggle game. That is no lie. If you don't like learning complicated juggles and off the ground bounces, you're never going to really enjoy Tekken at any kind of a level anymore. They've changed it. Originally, Tekken 1 through 3 was not like that. When it got to Tekken 4, they really started with these counter-hit juggles. And now here at Tekken 7, like the whole game is about the juggle game. Okay? So, yeah. That's not going to be your cup of tea. Um, more straightforward games. Obviously, games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Even though, yes, they do have combos and juggles. It's not all about that. In most cases, although admittedly, modern Street Fighter, like Street Fighter V, I personally hate. 
and I feel that those games are more pattern play than anything that's fun, but you may disagree. Mortal Kombat is pretty good in regards to not having a, a, a giant juggle system, but sadly, at the very same time, um, online play is very, very iffy. If you get a good connection, you could probably have a great game, but then you might have a game where it's laggy and you're annoyed. And I, I really feel there's certain characters they put into these franchises where they don't realize that in a laggy situation, that character is incredibly overpowered because they can just spam moves you can't really avoid or get around. So, yeah, i say it's a, it's a mixed bag. Mortal Kombat, maybe. Um, you know, outside of that, what other modern fighting games are there really right now? Dragon Ball Fighters is quite old, and it's basically based on Rushdown, which could be incredibly hard to get into, especially if you haven't played the game from launch, to even know how to defend against people who are just constantly rushing and juggling. Um, you know, right now there's the new Guilty Gear beta that's out, but that game has a giant learning curve. I know from experience, Guilty Gear is one of the most difficult and challenging fighting game franchises out there. It really challenges you. I'm telling you, like, you need to concentrate and learn so many different game mechanics to be good at Guilty Gear. That even me, someone who grew up playing Street Fighter in arcades, when Guilty Gear came out, I tried playing, I was like, dude, this is like so convoluted to me that I didn't really enjoy it. I never really got into it. Okay? Now, people are telling me the new Guilty Gear has been dumbed down. Well, that's great. So maybe you want to give it a look. All right? But outside of that, I really don't have much else to say. There's not really much going on with fighting games recently. If you take the last three few years, <clears throat> there's been nothing new out of Capcom. There's been nothing new from Tekken besides expansions to Tekken 7. There's been really nothing new at all from many places at all. So, yeah, not much going on right now. Okay. Fantasy Star PG cheered overnight and said, It's already becoming increasingly more difficult for developers to make games for Series S. That's a joke to gamers that Microsoft took a shortcut for a cheaper console. Considering Microsoft is a trillion dollar company. My point being, if Sony with $140 billion net worth took a, a deep loss on the discless PS5, Microsoft definitely would have made a discless Series X. Could have made a discless Series X, excuse me. I was incredibly skeptical of the Series S from the get-go. I said, probably within the first year, what you're going to see happening is companies are not going to care about this console because they don't want to make a weaker, crappier version of their games because the console doesn't have the hardware to run it like the Series X. So I guarantee you here's what's going to happen. Companies will be developing their games for the Series X and the PS5, and then it's a complete afterthought if the game will run well on Series S. They just won't care. And they'll just say, oh, well, maybe it runs at 10, 15 frames less on Series S, or, you know, maybe the resolution's lower on Series S. But I don't foresee companies caring that much, <clears throat> just being honest here. You know, they're going to focus on the best they can do, not dumbing down the, the, the game. So... If you bought Series S, you saved some money, but you probably screwed yourself over in the long run. And that's what I said back when they announced the Series S. I said, this does not sound like a good idea to me. So, I guess we'll see. You know, it remains to be seen right now. There's just not a lot going on with the new consoles. But as time progresses and we see new games coming out for them, we'll see what happens. Golden Coast Cherry says, why do girls like Panera Bread so much? Every time you talk to a girl about anything, they go to, to talk about Panera Bread. What? That has not happened to me once. So I can't answer your question because I've never had that, that experience. But thank you, Golden Colts, for the cheer. Dark Side Chris is here today. Has resubscribed at 14 months. Is another month in the books. Of good support for my favorite streamer. Thank you, Dark Side Chris. It's good to see you today. Appreciate your ongoing support. Game Campaign. Subscribe to the channel today. Thank you, Game Campaign, for the subscription. Golden Colts cheered again. 60 bits. And this is actually the first cheer that happened during the live stream. So I'll actually put this one up on the leaderboard here. <clears throat> and he says, what's a good recipe? Oh, I scrolled off my screen. What's a good recipe for peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Um, I personally do not like... Well, okay, let me take that back. Not that I don't like. I prefer fruit preserves to regular jelly. I think that having something that has chunks of fruit in it is actually tastier than just having plain jelly. Now, I always went for traditional grape jelly when I made peanut butter and jelly when I was a kid. But as I got older, I ventured out and tried other things. Apricot preserves, strawberry preserves. Those things are crazy good, even with peanut butter. They taste great. 
So be adventurous and try things differently. Here's another thing that's really good. Toast the bread first, then put the stuff on it, then everything gets melty. Oh, man. It also makes a disgusting mess everywhere, but man, does it taste good. <laughs> okay. Snakefish Gaming has subscribed for 23 months in a row and said close to two years. Thank you for close to two years of support. Snakefish Gaming. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Random Game Roulette did a 100-bit cheer. That now has become the top cheer of the day. Let's get that up on the leaderboard. And he says, is this the hardest Mario that you've played? It seems really tough. Absolutely not. This game, if you just play this game at base level, and he's talking about Super Mario 3D World, by the way. If you play this game at base level, and you're not trying to challenge yourself, all right, with getting the extra stars and getting the stamps, this game is pretty straightforward. There's not too much challenging about it, besides some basic platforming. But if you're actually trying to get all the hidden stuff, that's when the real challenge, you know, emerges. I would argue Super Mario 64 is probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest, 3D version of Mario ever made. And I would also argue that the original Super Mario Brothers games, notably the original Super Mario Brothers 1 and, and, and its original Japanese sequel, The Lost Levels, they call it in, in Western audiences, are the toughest games. They really haven't been that tough after that. If you just go for base completion, it's not that hard. It's only if you're trying to go for the completionist runs that these games get tough. So... Random Game Roulette actually uh, did another 100-bit cheer and said, The original Ghosts and Goblins is free on Switch with Capcom Collection. Might be fun to see the first one played first. Um, I don't think I'll be doing that. This new game comes out on Thursday. If you guys aren't aware, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection is a Thursday release. So I'll be trying that out on Thursday. And no, I'm not going to be playing Ghosts and Goblins the original before that. So, um, let's see here. George... Has done a 100-bit cheer. Thank you to George for a 100-bit cheer. I appreciate that. Metalhead is here today. Metalhead 2177 did two cheers. The first was 50 bits, and then the next one was 150 bits. And that 150-bit cheer is the biggest cheer of the day. So let's get that up on the leaderboard now. Thank you, Metalhead, for your support today. Actually, Metal... Boy, my, that was completely wrong. My hand was not on the home row keys. Uh... Metalhead was the name of an enemy in the Ninja, Tur Ninja Turtles. If you guys aren't aware, he was a robotic version of the Ninja Turtles made by Shredder and Krang, I believe, to fight the Turtles. You know, I might be wrong there. I think it might have been made by Donatello, and then Shredder and Krang reprogrammed it to fight the Turtles. <clears throat> Who knew that? Who knew that trivia? I do, because I grew up playing with Ninja Turtles. Grew up playing with playing the action figures, watching the cartoon, playing the video games. So I knew that. I bet you didn't. You guys were too busy watching Teletubbies and Ed, Ed and Eddie. All right, I had better stuff to do. <laughs> All right, our first tip of the day comes in from the Ad Adeli Tesla, the Adeli Tesla, who twip tipped me twenty dollars. And says, hey, Phil, I hope this gets you up started on the right foot. Cheers. By the way, I'm thinking about it. And my code... Oh, okay. She gave me a code word. Good. Now I know the code word. All right. So now I know when they tip, if they use that code word, that that is their code word. And I know that this is a legit tip. Thank you for that. Okay. So that is a $20 tip. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> and that gets us a good start. We're a fifth of the way to the tip skull already. And by the way, the code word was Mecha Lecha High Mecha Heine Ho, just so you guys know. <laughs> right. Uh, shout out to Nose Nobody, who did 100 bit cheers to happy 35th anniversary Zelda. Which is your favorite 3D Zelda game? 3D. Um, let's think about all the ones I played. I played Ocarina of Time. I played Majora's Mask. I played Wind Waker, the HD version. I never played the original Wind Waker, I played the HD version. I played Twilight Princess. I also played Skyward Sword, and I played Breath of the Wild. So I played a lot. Were there any that I didn't play? Are there any that I didn't play? I'm trying to think about this. No, I think I played them all, right? Isn't that all of them? Or did I miss out on one? I think I played them all. 
Minus cap is not 3D, right? All right. So out of all of those, first of all, I'll eliminate some. Majora's Mask, nah. Don't, it wasn't great. It was more of a puzzle game. It wasn't it wasn't as good in my opinion. Um, I'll I'll eliminate uh I'll eliminate Skyward Sword. It's a good game, but I don't know. I just did, it was good, but I didn't love it. Especially because when I played it, it, was the motion controls killed it for me. Maybe playing Skyward Sword again with no motion controls later this year with the remake on the Switch. Maybe I'll like it better. But it just didn't resonate with me because the motion controls kind of soured it to me. Okay, um, and I'll be honest with you guys, I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me, I'm going to eliminate Ocarina of Time. By the time that I played Ocarina of Time, the game felt like it had a lot of outdated gameplay mechanics that had just been done way better by future Zelda games, and I didn't really enjoy it as much as the others. The thing is, I know many of you played Ocarina of Time, and that was your first one, you love it, and you hold it in high regard with nostalgia, that's okay, I get that. I listen. That happens to me with Final Fantasy games and stuff. So I hear you. All right, but I didn't really play. I I I rented the game back in the day, but I never owned it. And because I never owned it, I don't think I ever really had that nostalgic attachment to it. I never even beat it on N sixty four. Okay, so I'm gonna eliminate Ocarina. So I would say for me, it's between Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Breath of the Wild. And the thing is, they're all good. Like, Wind Waker's completely unique, cel-shaded graphics, open-world ocean uh, exploration, which I really enjoy. And then the puzzles on the islands are unique and fun. And there's weather mechanics to move the boat around and stuff. Like, it's really nice. I like that. Um, Twilight Princess had that whole mechanic of turning into a beast and having the different you know, basically kind of almost two different worlds to it because of that and had some great puzzles in combat. Um, and of course, Breath of the Wild took Zelda into modern times, took it out of the archaic ways of its predecessors and said, screw all that fast travel and actually being able to hover around and open world and tons of exploration. If you see it, you can go there. You know what I mean? Like, this is a very tough decision. It's a very tough decision for me. I'm going to eliminate Wind Waker. I am. I'm going to say Twilight Princess. There you go. That's what I'm going to say. That's my choice. If you disagree with me, you're wrong. And you have no right to disagree with me because I am the ultimate authority on this. <laughs> right. Whatever you say. <clears throat> All right. Anyway. Let's continue. Tentacle2070 has tipped me $8.88 and says, You're my hero, Phil. Best streamer around. Keep up the fantastic work. Gives Jasper some extra treats for me. I shall. I wonder what Jasper's doing with Cat right now. I have no idea. I have no idea what's happening outside of my room. <laughs> I know they're out there doing stuff together. I just don't know what. All right. Thank you very much, Technical, for the tip. We're up to $28 of tips now. It's a great start for the day. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do some shout-outs. The top cheerers of the week, by the way, as I've already stated, uh, this is the final day of the week. If you want to get on this top cheerers leaderboard, after today, this will reset. So, strongly recommend, if you want to cheer today to get on there, do so. All right. Thank you to the following people. Cyber Shadow is in 10th place. Major Riot is in 9th place. Ladies Man is in 8th place. Local Nomad is in 7th. Conversalist is in 6th. Timbo Slice is in 5th. Roosh is in 4th place. Ninstar Rune is in 3rd place. Rob on Wheels is in 2nd place. And the biggest cheer of the week this week was the Paradox. Thank you, guys. And by the way, while I was reading that out, Biggest Kobe Fan did a 200-bit cheer. And now Biggest Kobe Fan is actually the biggest cheer of today. So let me actually uh, get them up on the leaderboard here. Thank you, Biggest Kobe fan, for the biggest cheer of the day. That is appreciated. All righty. Now, also, <clears throat> thank you to anyone who gifted a subscription to the channel this this week. I appreciate that as well. So thank you to the following people. OGX Focal, Big D's, 
Ratty Bag, Sir Spartan King, Jackalese, and Super Scuba 06. All of them gifted a single subscription to the channel. Also, thank you to Kate and Berg, Berg Becklemen, each of which gifted two subscriptions to the channel this week. And then thank you to Diocletian, who gifted five subs to the channel this week. I appreciate that, guys. Um... Oh, Timbo Slice has just cheered. He says, I feel like with all the delivery companies out these days, it has made people stay home more. I order things off of Amazon and even have my food from local stores sent to my door. Do you do any of that or do you still like going to stores? It's a great question. In the era of COVID, even when stores now have reopened and restaurants have reopened, okay? What did I do? I did 42 instead of 24. Oh, crap. I'm sorry, Kobe. My bad. Let me fix that. My bad. Fix that right now. Okay, I got it. So, that's an interesting question, Timbo. I'll give you my answer. Yes, it absolutely has changed the way that we do stuff. Before COVID ever happened, Kat and I loved going out. Once a week, the one day we get a week to go out and do stuff together, that we were all about it. You know, and some days we would actually go out and eat twice. Like, we'd go out and have a brunch and then have dinner after our busy day out before we head home. Um... And it was fun doing that, going to restaurants in person and everything. But, but, when COVID happened and all the restaurants and, and stores closed, obviously you had to start ordering from certain places. In particular, did we start ordering a ton more stuff off of Amazon? No, we did not. Um, you know, we enjoy going out and getting stuff from physical stores. And for a while there last year, a lot of the stores were closed except for what were considered essential stores. Grocery stores, drug stores, etc. The thing is... Most of those places around here um, have everything you want anyway. We have a lot of grocery stores that are also variety stores that have other products. So it wasn't like we didn't have access to the things we needed to buy. If you went to a grocery store, you could pretty much, it was a one-stop shop in a lot of cases. Okay. <clears throat> so that being said, um, it wasn't like, oh man, now I got to just order everything off Amazon. It was like, I'm already out to go grocery shopping, if I need another thing that's an odd or an end, I can just grab it while I'm out to do my essential shopping. You see what I'm saying? However, food definitely changed for us. Last year, for the first time ever, we started using DoorDash to get food delivered. We tried to support the local businesses that we liked the most. Sadly, some of them went out of business. There was one place in particular we really liked. It was a local Mediterranean food place that did fresh shawarma, fresh gyros or they call them heroes um you know all that kind of stuff, baklava and we ordered from them once the food showed up and it was insanely good we're like dude even getting it delivered this is good and then they went out of business because of covid they couldn't make enough money with the deliveries and we were like you gotta be kidding me that sucks ass they were the great they were good people the food was outstanding and now they're closed it's fucked up um you know, and it's not it's not just them. Like, a lot of places kind of got screwed over. There's there's some other places that just don't have half the stuff in it. There's one place we like to go, okay? They are 100% independently owned. Local small business. They're known as a brunch place. You can either get breakfast or lunch, and that's pretty much it. Every time that we order there or go there, they don't have something. They're out of an ingredient. And you can't get what you want. And you ask why, like, it's just because it's because of COVID. There's not enough demand for us to have our menu anymore, so we have very limited stuff that we can even cover to stay in business, and they're worried they're going to go out of business, you know? It sucks. COVID has really screwed things over for those kind of businesses. Um, So anyway, I digress. Yes, Kat and I have started ordering food for delivery way more often now than we used to. And in fact, some of the days now that we have off, we don't go out, or we go out just for grocery shopping or just to get a pet supply, and then we stay home and we'll order food at home rather than going out to the restaurants. So it depends. Like last week we did go to the to the brunch place um, and we enjoyed it. But then some weeks we'll just order, we'll order, like I told you guys, we got dim sum for the first time ever. We got dim sum a couple weeks ago. That was delivery. And it was great. We were like, oh my God, we were blown away at those steamed, steamed buns that you can get, steamed pork buns. We were like, holy shit, these things are crazy good full of flavor. You know? So, yeah, that's the deal. Um, 
that's the deal in regards to food delivery. We never ordered food at all. Like, the only thing we would order is, like, pizza every once in a while. Never. It would always be go out and eat. And ever since COVID started, um, you know, there's not much could be done. We, you know, we started ordering in. So now we have a combination. Some days we'll go out and eat. Some days we'll order in. Okay. All right. Uh, Toxic Texas did a 500-bit cheer. But then immediately, biggest Kobe fan 24 did a 501-bit cheer and says, ha, he's been dethroned. But then Toxic Tex did another 500-bit cheer and said, Phil. But then just right now did a 1,000-bit cheer and said, Phil, notice me. So within four cheers, excuse me, three cheers, this person became the third biggest cheer of the week. Okay then, so Toxic Tex, thank you for the 1,000-bit cheer. Wait a minute. Biggest Kobe fan 24 now did a 1,111 bit cheer. And that now makes Kobe fan the top cheer of the day again. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Biggest Kobe fan 24. There you go. So with that move, biggest Kobe fan became the second largest cheerer of the week and knocked down toxic text down under the bottom three dethroned him from being in the top three there you go <laughs> so <clears throat> seems we got a battle between toxic text and biggest kobe fan thank you guys both for the support and thank you for the cheers <clears throat> all right all right guys um does anyone have anything else they would like to talk about on today's pre-stream any other topics oh, oh wait a minute toxic text just did a three thousand bit cheer and that makes toxic text overall the biggest cheer of the week and the biggest cheer of the stream. Wait a minute. 3,000. Boom. Just like that. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you, Toxic Text. And also thank you, Biggest Kobe Fan, for your cheers today. It looks like Toxic Text is going to take the throne with that 3,000 bit cheer. Very nice. Okay. All right, so you guys have any questions, anything anyone would like to talk about in regards to things on the pre-stream before we get into, well, before we take our break, you know, we take a break here, I use the restroom, and uh, <clears throat> we get ready. And then we jump into Mario. Remember, Mario will be, uh, Mario will be all challenging stuff today. World 8. Trying to get all the stars and stamps. And then the post-game stuff, which I don't even know what it's going to be. We're going to find out. Dimple Slice Cheer says, hand out those penne points. Well, not yet. The free stream is not over yet. Thank you for the cheer. Uh, right now, just so you guys know, the wager that we had on this pre stream was, will the pre stream be one hour, 45 minutes long or shorter? Right now, the pre stream is about to hit one hour and 30 minutes long. So, as of now... It looks like it is actually going to end. And whoever wagered that it would not it would be shorter uh here is going to win. So there you go. Ellen Robotron says what difficulty will I play Divinity on? Default. Whatever the default is, that's what I'm playing it on. As always. So no, I cannot give you a 16-minute lecture on the history of Kingdom Hearts VG stuff. I'm sorry. That would be cheating. That would be absolutely cheating. No. Dino Bacon Pants. I do not wear jeans to bed. I wear a burlap sack that scratches all my skin and irritates it immensely. Hello, Hubby Gaming. Good to see you today. All right. So that's it. There's nothing else to talk about. No further contributions to shout out. Then I guess that's going to be it for today's pre-stream. Looks like that's going to be it. That we're ending now. So. All right. FPB Original is wondering, do we have emergency plans if we're to lose power for an extended period of time? No, there are no plans. What are you going to do? If it happens, it happens. You hunker down. Right? Candles for warmth. <laughs> we actually have a gas. Uh, we have a gas fireplace. If our power goes out. Our fireplace still works as long as we have natural gas. So even if we had no heat to heat the house, we could turn on the fireplace and stay warm in, in the, the living room. So. 
Yes, I played every available Street Fighter game that was on the Dreamcast. Yes. What are my thoughts on The Last of Us 2? Best game of a generation. Really showing what the PS4 could do. Game of the year. 2020, for sure. Shout out to big old Bean. You wanted a shout out, you can get one. There you go. I need matches? No, I don't. My pilot light stays on. My pilot light stays on in my fireplace. So even if the power's out, the fire's still burning. I could just increase or decrease the amount of fire, but I my I I, I got it set up well here. So <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Equilibrium wants a shout out, but I will not give him one. <laughs> there you go. All right, these are some really dumb questions right now. So I'm not even going to address these. Unless someone has something legit to say, I think we're just going to adjourn and go on our break and uh, and come back with Mario. I don't see anything legit, and certainly there's nothing to shout out, no contributions coming in. So I think I think it's time to end the pre-stream. Habib gave me some what will be for dinner tonight. I believe my wife is making her Mexican bake, but with a twist. She's using a few different ingredients. Like usually, well, the old Mexican, Mexican bake we used to use, we used to use chicken. And then we would do big, uh, beans, refried beans, uh, Mexican cheese, tortillas, obviously. Um, what else? We would do, um, man, let me think about this. Oh, salsa, some sour cream, some tomatoes, sometimes some peppers. She's mixing it up this time. This time we're doing seasoned turkey with chipotle seasoning. And we're also going to put in some Spanish-flavored rice in there. Like we're doing it very a little differently to try to make it different and better. So it should be interesting to see how it comes out today. The Loudest Fart just resubscribed at 39 months. And says, my farts have been incredibly loud lately. Much louder than normal, if you can believe it. Wow. Loudest Fart, you should probably go to the doctor and get that checked out. I'm just going to guess there may be something going on in your colon that you want to investigate if your farts are so loud. I mean, are you breaking glass at this point? Are your, are your windows rupturing when you fart? That's bad. You have someone in your house drinking a glass of wine and the glass just explodes. I mean, stop that. You got to get that checked out. Proto Man says, I genuinely want to know if Ghosts and Goblins coming to the PSN. No, it's Switch only. Switch exclusive. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Yeah, or Resurrected. Only for the Switch. Yeah, he said, fuck. Yeah, I know. I know, you would think it would be multi-platform. It's not. It's only for the Switch. Going to my head, do I believe in ghosts? No. I'm not, I've told you guys this. I'm not against believing that anything paranormal or supernatural exists at all. At the very same time, um, I have not seen any evidence in my life of anything like that. People ask, have you ever had a supernatural experience or anything like that? No, never. I never, you know, the one thing that creeped me out when I was a kid, I swear I saw the shadow of my uncle in the in the in the hallway um when I was a kid, but it wasn't real. It didn't really happen. We investigated and none of that happened, so uh you know, nothing. I've never had a paranormal experience, so I have no reason to believe it exists. Okay. Gangsta Chicken has tipped me two dollars. Thank you to Gangsta Chicken for a two dollar tip. That jumps us up to thirty dollars in tips already. Thank you guys very much for your support on pre-stream today. I really appreciate it. All right. All right, so now it does seem like things have dried up. So, ladies and gentlemen, since there's no more contributions and no more major questions, I think it is time to adjourn the pre-stream, which means that, yes, ladies and gentlemen, one hour, 35 minutes, and 47 seconds... We did not hit... Oh, wait a minute. Random Game Roulette just did a 100-bit cheer. It says, do you believe in aliens? Uh, do I believe that there could be extraterrestrial beings out there? Yes. Do I believe there's any concrete evidence of it yet? No. So, until there's concrete evidence, I don't think it's worth freaking out about. Nothing we can do about it anyway if they are out there spying on us, right? Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like that's going to be it for the pre-stream. Thank you for your support. Thanks for chilling with me and talking. I appreciate that. And uh, what I'm going to do is take a break, use the restroom, all right? And then when I come back from break, it's going to be Mario 3D World, finishing up World 8. 
and then heading into the post-game stages that will unlock. Again, guys, I'm going to need your help to know exactly what to do to unlock all the post-game content because I'm not aware of it. I don't know what's actually present. I would like to see it all. So if you could help me with that, I would appreciate that. Okay? All right, that's it. So, wow, we were close. Now we're at 1 hour 36. Yeah, we were close, guys. We were within 10 minutes of it going over a, a 1 hour 45. But, yeah, it just we talked it out. We had enough discussion. Con contributions are over. So, that's it. We're ending the pre-stream, guys. Officially. Right now. Here we go.